All right, so what we've looked at so far is we've looked at how to build the office building, how to build the people, and how to build the furniture and the paper and, and these little assets. And now let's go ahead and look at, kind of wrap it up and look at some other uh, tips that we might want to consider when we do something like this. I think the first tip I would consider is um, when I build something, I need to determine uh, what's going to be persistent across my slides. So for example, if I build this office, there are going to be some things that are going to be on every single screen, and that's probably uh, the office equipment and some of the characters. And so those are the things I want to consider, okay, what's persistent and what's going to be added to the slides based on where the learner's at. Those things that are persistent, you want to add to the master slide. And the reason is you only have to add it to one slide on the master, and that'll work across a multiple of, or multitude of slides. Uh, if you uh, do like a lot of people do is they'll copy and paste this over and over again, it's just going to increase your production and increase your publishing time. So uh, what we can see here is if we look at this particular image, which is all a bunch of grouped PowerPoint objects, we look at the selection pane, you'll notice that there's 311 uh, grouped objects in there. Um, and so I don't know uh, how many um, additional objects that would be if you consider that over a number of slides. So say you had this on 10 slides and you copied it over um, that's over 3,000 objects that have to be rendered. So that's going to increase your publishing time. If you put on your master slide, it only has to be rendered once on the master, and then it works across a number of slides. And then better yet, um, what I would do is I would actually um, build out my graphics, and then I would right-click and save those as gra graphic files and then bring them back in. So for example, here's the PowerPoint object that's 311 things that would need to be rendered. If I go to the next slide, this is actually that same image, but I saved it as a picture and then I brought it back in. And now when we look at the selection pane, it's just one object. So uh, if I go to this slide, it's 311 objects. If I go to this slide, it's one object. So if you have one object on a master slide, and that's really going to um, increase your or decrease the time it takes to do your publishing. And it's a lot easier to work with one object than it is to work with a number of uh, PowerPoint objects. Um, so that's those are some tips. So uh, consider what's persistent across the slides and put that on the master. And then um, consider using those graphics, um, creating them in PowerPoint, and then saving them out as pictures, and then bringing the pictures back in. So I would do that with the office. I would do that with if we, let's close this down, if we uh, look at our slides here. I would do that with the people. So uh, build your people. Uh, take the person here. Right click. Uh, save it as a picture. And then you can use those pictures uh, in, in your course rather than having to worry about uh, these all being PowerPoint shapes. And um, so that will help you out. Now when you actually set the stage, in your scenario. So let's zoom in a little. What you want to do is consider the, the ver variations you have in what people see. So um, one thing that adds some interest is angles. You don't want everything to be straight lines. So you want angles and the angles add interest. I think the curved walls make it more interesting than uh, having just straight walls. Um, the way you position your furniture. So for example, you'll notice this chairs angled out. You'll notice this chair is angled out, the angles on the paper, um, the angles on the character here, the keyboards. So you can go look at that. And all of that stuff actually adds a little bit more interest because it looks like, you know, everything's a little different. So it kind of looks like people are, act there's real activity there. And it doesn't look just like um, you placed objects on the screen. And then you can add more detail. You could add little plants. You could make these tables look more interesting by adding cups or pencils. I think having the paper on the table and uh, different ways that they're positioned and the keyboards, all of that makes everything look more interesting. And the more interesting it is, uh, the more immersive the experience is, and then and, and you're kind of drawing the learner into that. And it just and the uh, the ability to look around the scene and see different things is kind of nice. So those are the uh, simple tips and tricks.